Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. Today we're exploring the Japanese handle wrapping technique called Tsukumaki. So the word Tsukumaki just means handle wrap. You take the word for handle, tsuka, and combine it with the word for wrap or roll, maki, and you have Tsukumaki. So traditionally, the ito or wrap that was used was made out of cotton or silk, but today we're going to be using coreless paracord. It's a little bit smaller, but it's going to work just fine. And then I also have a forceps just for making our knots tight at the end, but you can also use an embroidery needle. And you want some kind of clamp to keep your weave tight as you go. And then, since we didn't want to destroy the beautiful wrap on the sword, we're going to be wrapping this wooden spoon today. So to my Japanese audience, I apologize. I'm not going to be using the traditional terminology for this. I don't have it all straight. So I'm going to be speaking in mostly English terms to our paracord crafting audience. But we'll take the middle of our paracord. I've got about 10 feet here. And that'll be more than enough for my little eight inch handle. So you want to first find the middle of your cord and loop it around the back of your handle. I'm going to clamp mine in place right away just to keep things secure while I'm demonstrating. You may find that this clamp will be in the way as you start. we've got it clamped. I'm going to set this right cord off to the side, keep it out of the way. And this first one, I'm going to make a 90 degree turn downwards by wrapping it underneath like that. And then another one towards the side that I was going in the first place. So we've got this shape right here. And we want that to be right in the middle of our handle. I'm going to scoot it back a little ways, like that. So we've got kind of one direction of an X. Then with our other side, we're going to do the same thing right on top of it. So you want to keep that first side secure. So you may need to scoot your clamp down. With that second cord, 90 degree turn down by tucking it underneath. Right over the top of that last one. And then another turn to bring it back to going towards the left. And if you have everything held secure, you can take that clamp off and move it down. I'm going to adjust mine a little bit first. You can also use a hammer to flatten that down a little bit. When you have it all in place, it should look about like this. Again, the traditional ito is flatter than coreless paracord, and so it'll lay a little bit flatter than this. But as you can see, this looks pretty good too. Once that twist is tight and dressed, you can flip the spoon over and clamp what you've done so far. Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to start on the same side as before. So with my left cord, flip underneath. You want to be careful that you don't flip upward like that, because then you are left with a loop. But if you twist it this way, it holds itself down. You want this to be just off center towards the left so that your next twist is going to make the whole thing centered. Like that. Do your matching one on top. Wish I had three more fingers.
There we go. And we'll clamp that as well. Once you have that one step down, it's pretty easy then to flip back and forth and just keep on making those knots down the length of the handle. We'll catch you at that point and show you how to finish it off with some fancy Japanese knots. Once you make it to the bottom, we have a special knot to tie before we stick our cords through the hole. So I'm going to flip this around and with this right side cord, you want to bend it downwards and we're going to be pulling it up underneath this bottom wrap. So with our forceps, we want to feed those underneath without messing up our corners. All right, so once you have your forceps underneath, you want to open them up and clamp onto that cord. It helps if you don't have a melted end on your paracord for this. Once you pull it through, you want to make sure that you don't have any twists. So we have that loop made with our right side cord. Now with this left one, we're going to be going underneath on the right side with a twist on the bottom and back up to the top underneath the left side. So we need to again feed our forceps through on this right side, like that. And again, if you have an embroidery needle, you can attach a little bit of thread to it and use that to pull it underneath. There's our first half, and then back up underneath on the other side. So let's pull this right side cord tight first. Like that. And then on this side, we want to bend underneath so that our cord is going to be catching on that knot and not pulling right back up through. So to get that set up with the forceps, I to bring them down from the top. And feed your cord through. Before you tighten those knots down, you just want to double check that all of your last couple wraps are tight before moving on. Once that's tightened down, you can feed these cords through the hole. So we'll start by taking this right side cord again and bring it underneath. So we'll put our forceps through from the bottom. and then again, right next to it. So you have this loop without any twists. Go ahead and pull that one tight. And then with our left side cord, we want to bring that underneath as well to the left side. at which point we'll go underneath the other cord, do that half twist again, so that you have some of the wide side of the cord facing the knot, and bring it back underneath to the top on the right side. your loop faces that way. And again, you want to make sure that these wraps are tight before you pull that through, otherwise that's just going to fall and go right through the knot. All right, one more time of wrapping around towards the bottom. There are some variations on these knots. And so I am not the, the authority on this, 
but this is as best as I could replicate it with paracord. At this point, we'll just clip both ends and melt them down right where they are. And there's our finished wrap. If you're looking really closely, you can see that P2 token that we put in the middle. I think this turned out really well. Um, the red looks good on the bamboo, and while it's not a samurai sword, I think it's a pretty fine looking instrument. So we hope you try this method for yourselves on your own knives and costume swords and wooden spoons. We'll put a link in the description to where you can buy Corliss Paracord and all the tools that we used in this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.